you sure? There it is. There it is. Welcome back, everybody, to Hoops HD. Another great start. This is our continuing preseason coverage. I'm your host, Chad Sherwood, joined for now by Joby Fortson, David Griggs, and John Titel. Uh, we have one of the one or two other people that might be joining us through the course of this show. Uh, this is our Big Ten preview podcast. Uh, unlike the Ivy League, there will be Big Ten basketball this year. At least we hope so. Uh, so we are going to be doing a podcast for, for this. Um, and just as a brief note, as I mentioned, the start of the other previews we've already had. And if you look up there, actually, on the top of the website, you can see a link to our previews and you can get all of them there. Uh, but as, I, as we mentioned, we are assuming for the purpose of these podcasts that we will get something close to a season completed this year. And we're going to assume that, you know, we get a Big Ten champion, that we have a Big Ten tournament, and that we have an NCAA tournament, and we're going to try to put all those issues aside for now. But what I do want to do here is go through, take a look at every team in the Big Ten, kind of go through what each of us feels about these teams and where they're going to finish. At the end, we'll figure out, we'll let you know how many teams are going to make it from the, into the NCAA tournament from the Big Ten. And once again, so we've got a field of 68 at the end of the year. Uh, but I guess, you know, actually, it was very interesting. The uh, AP preseason top 25 came out beginning of this week. And uh, Titel, amazingly, there were seven teams from the Big Ten. Uh, that's 70% of the conference, if I, my bad math works. <laughs> it's 50%. 70% out of 10 teams, right? Uh, uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No. Oh, my mistake. Okay. Half the conference made the top 25. Uh, the highest rated being the team all the way up at number five with the Iowa Hawkeyes, surprisingly. Not Michigan State, not Wisconsin, not the but, – but Iowa, the highest rated team out of the Big Ten. you have a tell? problem with that, Chad? Uh, I don't know. I'm asking you about them. Do you, do you agree with that? Do you think this is the best team in the Big Ten? It's, uh, I think – I do agree with that. Okay. Uh, I love Fran McCaffrey since he used to coach at Penn. Uh, I love Luca Garza because he's arguably the best player in college basketball and decided to come back rather than go to the draft. Uh, Jordan Bohannon, uh, the experienced point guard, is back healthy. I hope he had left hip surgery last year, but he got his medical red shirt, so I think he's good to go. Joe Wieskamp is a little glue guy who does everything. The other two are seniors. He's a junior. Um, I think they have a lot of nice pieces here, and I don't – know that this is like a national championship team, but I have no problem with it being ranked tops in this conference. Well, uh, Joby, let me ask you about this as well, because he didn't even mention a couple other guys. C.J. Frederick led the Big Ten in three-point shooting last year. Connor McCaffrey led the nation in assisted turnover uh, last year. It, it, I, I'm with Titel, actually. I love this Iowa team. <laughs> it's a great – and seven of the top eight players return. This is – you know, Garza rightfully – gets a lot of the attention. He is a Naismith candidate. He would be my preseason Naismith candidate. You know, so obviously at the end of the show, he's my Big Ten player of the year. Uh, But I think Titel nailed what really is key here, and that is the health and the return of Bohannon, because I think when you have a point guard, along with a just absolute go-to score on the other end of the floor – it is a one-two punch that really is tough for teams to meet with. Iowa's great, but as we get through this conference, so is everybody else. Oh, D- David, um, I think he's dead right that so is everybody else. And uh, Yeah, guess- another thing about right. Iowa, defensively they're really good too. Uh, I'm a little surprised that they're ranked this high this early. Uh, I, I was going to pick them as a potential dark horse, and now I can't do that, so I'm a little disappointed in the rating. Yeah, that's, they're not going to be a dark horse at number five, a, a team that might be – well, let's talk about this, David. We have another top ten team in this conference, if I'm correct, and it's once again, it's not Michigan State. It's not Wisconsin. It's not Ohio State. Uh, it's not Michigan. It's Illinois. Yeah, and I again, I don't know if I would – I'm a little surprised that they're ranked this high that this early, but I definitely think that they're on pace to be a protected seed or, or definitely a top 25 team. I mean, I mean, again, to rank them in the top 10 in the preseason, I'm not saying that they're not going to end up there, but I figured that they would be sort of one of the teams that wouldn't get there until they played their way up there, if, if that makes a little bit of sense. Uh but, yeah, I, I mean, I'm really big on both of them, and uh, it's not outrageous that they're both ranked that high right now. 
Well, well, uh, Titel, is Illinois that close to, to Iowa? And, and are they, you know, a potential, you know, Elite Eight, Final Four type caliber team in your in your mind? No, because David, it is outrageous that they're ranked that high. Oh, um, they have okay. two great pieces. Of course it's not. Sonmo and Kofi Coburn. I'm glad they came back to school. I think they both could be like first team all conference guys. So while I think that there's a good argument to be made that they are the second best team in the conference, I think this is two stars and a bunch of role players. And while I know Brad Underwood can coach, I am not buying into this Elite Eight hype for the Illini. So bringing Jacob Granderson like from Holy Cross over doesn't make them a national title contender, huh? Holy something, but no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, well, I, I, there's a team I kind of like a little more than them uh, that you mentioned, and that's uh, I, actually you, you know what? Uh, and uh, Joby, let me ask you this because I actually went a little bit of out of order here because there's so many of these top 25 teams. That was, Illinois was number eight. There was a team above them that we haven't discussed yet in the in the, in the top 25. Wisconsin came in at number seven. Yeah, I, I love the Badgers. Uh, you know, this is a team I I think because once again, like Iowa, returns a ton of pieces. I think it's the top eight scores or the starting five is all back. And uh, you give Greg Gard, you, you know, and that tradition that's there, uh, knowledge of the defense, and more importantly, this is the team. All right, we talked in our ACC preview about Virginia finishing the year strong. Everybody on the podcast like, hey, they're our preseason number one. Uh, I mentioned Providence, how much I like Providence in our Big East preview because of their six-game stretch down the down. Wisconsin, right back at you. Eight games, part of the conference title. And remember, they started poor. Yeah. And they just accelerated off. I think they can continue that same pattern because of the continuity of the system and the players. This is, this is one of those Wisconsin teams that I will be shocked if you aren't talking uh, protected seed strongly at the end of the year because of – all the pieces that we see coming back and in this COVID environment, I think that means more than ever before. Is, is, that, where, is that where you're going, David? Go ahead. Yeah, it was. I really like this whiskey team. So I'm glad you went there. Not to like double back on that, but uh, Jovi brought up an interesting point, how they started slow. Uh, we saw that the year before that and the year before that. And really the whole time Greg Gard's been there, they, they've really been solid at the end most of the time, not uh, two years ago. But, you, you know, why is it – why is whiskey seemingly always slow out of the gate? And with so much coming back, do we not see that this year finally? Well, Titel, what do you mean? You want, you want to respond to David's question there? I mean, do, do you think they can get out, get, get, out of the gate, get out of the gate quicker with this uh, – with all these guys coming back now? Yes, the X factor for the Badgers is Micah Potter. Uh, without him last year, early on, they lost a neutral site game to New Mexico. With him, yeah. they finished strong, winning their last each of their last eight games in conference play. He's 6'10", 248, but he's not a traditional big man. Like Ethan Happ, when you think of Wisconsin, he's the untraditional superstar from outside. Great shooter. 45% from the three-point line, 86% from the free throw line. And he's enormous. Like, you cannot stop him. Well, beyond these teams, there's another team we discuss every year I in the like Big whiskey. Ten. And I know you like, I like whiskey. whiskey. I love like uh, whiskey. But, well, David, let me ask you about another team, though. Uh, right now, shut down with their head coach having been tested positive for COVID, among others. But Michigan State Spartans, Cassius Winston's gone, Xavier Tillman's gone. But they still got a lot, don't they? Uh, they are number 13 in the preseason rankings. Yeah, and Michigan State's one of those teams that, I, I, I mean, I just think that they're nine times out of ten, they're going to be in the top 25. They're going to be in the national picture, and I don't think that this year is going to be any different. Uh, even when they have a down year, they're still pretty good. Uh, to them, a down year is still finishing in the top half of the bracket or maybe just outside of being a protected seed, but – I, I mean, just out of history, and, like, I know that they're losing a lot, but I think they got enough back, and they're probably adding enough to where they're going to be maybe not number one, but, y you know, probably hovering around in the teens all year or better. Yeah, well, uh, then again, like, well, I'll, I'll save this thought for afterwards, okay. but uh, 
Well, no, I'll go ahead and throw it out there now. Just some food for thought. All these good teams, all these ranked teams, is there enough out of conference games to kind of get this, you, you, you know, conference established enough to where – well, well, that that's good. That may answer. The, that may be the same question for everybody, David. So I think that's going to be something yeah. we're debating during the course of the whole the season: ACC how we evaluate teams. Challenge will mean a lot. Yeah, uh, I mean, and speak, it really will. Yeah. And, and the Hauser brother challenge too. When we talk about Michigan State, Joby, uh, they have Joey Hauser. Uh, Rocket Watts is going to try to step in and make some of the score, make up for some Winston scoring, I guess. Uh, you got, Henry. you know, could Joshua Langford yeah. finally have a healthy season? He's been in college for about three hundred years, hasn't he? <laughs> So, yeah, and I, I think Michigan State is your traditional Izzo. I think it will. They will start soon. Uh, you lose Winston, you lose that core with Tillman and Winston. I think they like, for instance, you see Izzo teams from time to time when they don't return stuff. Kind of, yeah, they'll get a few wins out of conference, but they have, like you said, they have Virginia early. I think they have. It's one of the other elite teams, like uh, you know, like Duke or. Uh, they have another big ACC team early, like Duke or North Carolina or something. And, and they – and, you know, I could see them lose those games. But then by the end of the year, a rematch, who knows how that goes, <laughs> you, you know. I, uh, but with the Big Ten's depth this year, does that hurt a team like Michigan State who might be slower out of blocks in contrast to the, my statement on Wisconsin that I already stated since they already are kind of rolling or Iowa, which is returning so many – so this year you might not you might need to get ready faster. You might not have that ability to get into the swing of things. Not that Michigan State's going to miss the tournament, but they might not be that protected seed. They, they might not be last year. up to protected seed level. They, they missed it last year. Uh, 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 Titel coming in number twenty three in the preseason rankings. Yet another Big Ten team. Uh, the Ohio State Buckeyes uh, got got in there as well. Is that a deserving top twenty five ranking in your opinion? I think it's a little high, especially because I don't know how many Wessons are left uh, in Columbus. But uh, I do like Seth Pounds. Uh, at least some Ivy League basketball player is going to get some action this year. <laughs> Transfer to healthy. Harvard. He was 2018 Ivy League Player of the Year and missed not one but two years due to knee injuries. I hope that he and Josh Langford never hang out because that could be an injury <laughs> fest waiting to happen. Uh, I also heard that Abel Porter is uh, sitting out due to COVID reasons, so they're missing a couple pieces. But Chris Holtman is a fantastic coach. So I think between a new guy like Towns and a lot of upperclassmen, even if Porter's out, he should have enough there. I, he could be top 25, but uh, not much higher than that. Yeah, a, a jo Joby, bad. this Ohio State team, another couple other transfers, uh, Justice Suen coming over yeah. from Cal, uh, Jimmy yeah. Sotos, yeah. after a couple attempts, did get his waiver uh, yeah. confirmed also, double-digit score coming over from Bucknell. Yeah, no, I, I think Ohio State – Holtzman is the type of coach who is known to putting pieces together pretty well. He did it a couple of years with some freshmen mixed in when he took over from Mata. Uh, Ohio State, I think, can be a very solid team. But uh, the, the problem is it's the wrong year in the Big Ten maybe to be merely solid uh, just because the conference is so good. It's what we hinted at just in the last – and talking about Michigan State, who I think is going to be ahead of Ohio State – in my opinion, the problem they have is there's only so many places to get wins. <laughs> you know, we're, we'll go through the conference, but it's not, you're going to, when all of a sudden, I, what, Purdue is your eighth place team that, that, you know, they could have been a top 25 team too, and they didn't make it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, come on. No, we got a ways to go. I mean, they yeah, they, what they were 26th. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm serious. I think their votes were like 26 or 27. I there, if it's you rigged. 500 and slip up you could be in trouble for a bit and I think Ohio State will get one but it's not like they have a ton of breathing room they're certainly worthy of it on the court uh, on the initial eye test for preseason yeah the, the one thing about Chris Holtman even going back to Gardner Webb it, it, it just seems like I don't recall a single year where he did not finish ahead of where that they were expected to be so you got to keep that in mind. This is a guy that does a great job at developing talent and putting the pieces together for what he wants. I, I know that he's respected as a coach, but probably not as much nationally as he should be. He's a phenomenal coach. I, I wish he would have stayed at Butler. Well, since we're talking preseason top 25 teams in the Big Ten, of course, 
we know we've got to be discussing the number 24 preseason we, ranked team. Chad, we're running out of Rutgers, time. Rutgers, Scarlet Knights, nationally ranked in the preseason, my Scarlet Knights, with almost everybody back, led by Ron Harper Jr., who's an amazing player, Geo Baker, who all he does is win games on the last second shot. So, uh, you've got guys like Jacob Young coming off the bench. Miles Johnson is a big force down low as long as he stays out of foul trouble. And uh, Cliff Omarui, if I pronounced that correctly, the uh, the top 50, 50 freshman recruit coming in. There's a – Titel, I'm very biased here. Can you give me, give me an unbiased opinion? Uh, how good is this Rutgers team? They're allowed to be biased, and they are a good team. Um... Harper's great. He's only a junior, and he's arguably one of the best players in the conference. Uh, Baker, it's always good to have senior leadership in the backcourt. Um, I don't know enough about uh, Cliff Omarui. I've heard he's good, but obviously we'll see. I'm never sure, especially this year, how quick it'll be of a learning curve for the hotshot freshman. But um, I think it's a fair assessment now. But as you said, the conference is very tough. So I fear that if Rutgers had to pick one year to make like a good run, this is not the year to do it, unfortunately. Yeah, and they've got to find a got to find a way to win games on the road. Although maybe that'll be easier this year when there's no fans in the stands. So who knows? Well, that, I mean, I mean that's the thing. I think you are a little biased here, Jack. Is at the end of the day, this is a team that struggled on the road last year and that still did not make the NCAA tournament. Just, just, just get throwing out the facts. Um, Joby, how about the number twenty-five rated team, the Michigan Wolverines? Uh, once again, I mean, it's just remarkable to get team after team after team. Uh, they lose a little more than, than, than some others, but you know, they have, they have, uh, I, I think Livers could lead the league in scoring, you know, because he's going to be, it, 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 you know, even with Garza there, uh, because he's going to be so much the focus of Michigan. I, I think Michigan we're, we're going to see how good a coach Juwan Howard is, um, plain and simple, because we've already gone through so many strong teams. This could be the weak link team here. Uh, but unfortunately, there, I also see this conference piling up a ton of teams around 500, and all of those teams around 500 are awesome. You know, and Michigan has a chance to be part of that. But we'll see. Yeah, well, the Titel. They have an Ivy League transfer as well, who averaged twenty, almost twenty-three points a game. And Mike Smith, does does that help a little bit here for the Wolverines at least? The most uncommon name in America, Mike Smith, coming <laughs> to Ann Arbor. Um, no, it's going to be. I think he can play at that level. He really impressed me uh, when he would kill Penn over and over and over. Um, we, as Joby said, we know about Howard as a coach. What I'm interested in is how he is as a recruiter, because I thought he was only going to be okay. He, I believe, has now is the number one recruiting class for next year. So yep. as good as this team might be, and I love Livers, arguably the best free throw shooter in the nation. Check out his stats. I think next year with the guys they're bringing in, they could be Final Four caliber. Yeah, but a few other guys. Uh, Sean D. Brown coming in. Better have a, you better force. have a good recruiting class the following year because a lot of those guys might be one and done. <laughs> <laughs> David. That's it for top 25 rated uh, teams. And we only went through half the conference. So of the remainder of the conference, who, who would be your, your pick for the next best team? And I still think we're talking about NCAA tournament caliber teams at this point. We probably are. And it will it, be it, for a while. So go ahead. <laughs> yeah, we probably are. It's kind of hard to say. There is a little bit of a drop off. I would have said, you, you know, Maryland, you got to kind of look at them. Purdue, who Jovi mentioned. I think that they're sort of in that mix of, of being squarely inside the bubble, but maybe not around a protected seed. Um, you, which, you way, know, which way do you want to go? You want to go Purdue? You want to talk a little Purdue or? Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. We can talk Purdue. Okay. Well, tell, tell me, I mean, Matt Harms transferred out, but uh, you know, you know, are they, are they that good? Are they in the, are they in the turn picture? Well, I, I mean, I think, you know, they, they have some experience coming back, but I mean, I, I know like, uh, you, you know, they lost some, but I think that they have enough coming back to where, yeah, I think they'll kind of be in the tournament picture. They should have a decent balance between the backcourt and the frontcourt. I think they kind of got enough depth and I, 
I do want to say that, like, you want to start to look at how deep teams go this year because of how the schedule might play out. You might see a lot of situations to where teams are playing four games in six days or something like that. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, they're kind of big. It's kind of hard for me to talk about a team until you see them on the floor. But I, I do kind of like them, and I like the Terps as well. Well, well, uh, well Joby, on this Purdue team at least, um, Eric Hunter is now out until January. Not, I mean, you know, six weeks. So, but he should be back for conference play. Uh, you're relying on a couple of big freshmen coming in, but, you know, how does a freshman play in a season like this? Uh, you seem to like them. I don't know that I'm, that I'm with you uh, yeah, on it, though. I, I like them as a tournament-level team in a normal year, but once again, you know, without the out-of-conference to pile up a record, they're not hitting 20 wins. Yeah, you know, in a 27-game schedule, they could be the odd man out despite being good. I think Trevion Williams is a very solid uh, presence on the inside. I don't think they're going to miss harms a lot. That's a bold statement, but I'll stand by it. Uh, Purdue and Painter, it, it, you know, Painter can put together a he, – he's shown it time and time again. When they made the runs of the Elite Eight, n- n- you know, th- that team wasn't projected to be, uh, you know, uh, an Elite Eight-level team, but they certainly were. I'm not saying that's going to happen again, that Lightning will strike uh, twice. But, yes, Purdue deserves to be reckoned, and they're going to – they're going to get theirs, so to speak, in the Big Ten schedule. Uh, will it be enough for a bid? We'll see. I think the talent's there, though, that is NCAA talent worthy. Um, do, do we want to talk about wh- where are you going next? Because well, I was gonna we got to go there eventually, Chad. There is a Penn State. Well, Galen, Galen's right now upset. We'll, we'll get to Penn State in a while, <laughs> while David. I think we still, we still got a handful of teams yeah. to get through first. And I want to first ask Titel about the other team you mentioned earlier. And that's uh, – that's the Maryland Terrapins. This was, uh, Titel, was not a very deep team last year, and their top two players are gone. I'm not very – I don't think that David is right by saying that, that this is a team that we should be discussing uh, as a tournament caliber team, but where are you on them? I'm in the feeling that uh, their hopes of doing anything this year are following Jalen Smith into the draft, so I don't think they're going to do much. The team I do want to talk about, okay. if I can stay, if you can stay with me, is Minnesota because I wish that Daniel Oturu had stuck around. His numbers, if you look at them compared to Luca Garza, they're like neck and neck um, for a couple of big men, but they still bring back a ton of guys. Uh, Eric Curry after multiple knee surgeries. P.S. What is, what is the deal in this conference with people and leg injuries? Um, Marcus Carr was great in his first year after transferring from Pitt. They bring in a couple of transfers. Liam Robbins, who's on the Kareem Abdul-Jabbar watch list, for that award, and Booth Gotch, who's transferred from Utah. Um, they have a lot of talent at a lot of positions, and I think that now that he's the elder statesman Patino with Richard, now that Rick's coming back to Iona, I think Minnesota's actually going to be exceeding expectations this year. I agree with you. I'm there on Minnesota. I have them as the, after the teams rated the top 25, I think they're the next best team in this conference. So Really? You like them uh, that much? I I like them, and I like them better than Purdue. I like them better than Maryland. Wow. Uh, Joby, I like them better than Indiana also. Do you you like anything about Indiana? Uh, uh, Well, no. I like the depth. (laughs) (laughs) All right, let's move on. (laughs) (laughs) No, I like like the depth and the talent of Indiana. We're going to find it. Yeah, I've said – we're going to find out how good of a coach Juan Howard is. We're going to find out how good coach Matt Matt Painters. No, we're really going to have to find out how good Archie Miller is because there is talent there. And if he can't put it together, we've got to start scratching our heads because he hasn't. And it's not – this is not the cupboard is bare Davis years. It, you know, there is – there is, you know, a, 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 uh, whether it's um, – whether it's Jackson Davis or Race Thompson, I mean, they have depth. It, as well, they have highly rated guys. Titel is the recruiting expert. But they have highly rated guys, and they're it's they would have made the tournament last year by the skin of their teeth. I think they're that good again, but they should be taking a step up. And I, I everybody's projecting them not to take that step up. All right, Archie Miller, it's your turn to see if you can turn it on. Let's go. Yeah, it looks like they do have four starters back, so you got to like the experience. But I, I kind of have the same apprehension, I think, anyway, that you have, Joby, to where your typical Indiana year under, you know, Miller has been they get one or two big wins. They hold serve most of the time, but not all of the time. And then at the end of the year, there just isn't enough there. 
uh, or there's barely enough there, which it, maybe they make it last year, maybe they don't. But, I mean, they weren't exactly a first ballot team um, the way that they, they and their following think they have a birthright to be. Uh, David, you wanted us to go there. Let's go there. Um, yeah. The Penn State Nittany Lions had a hell of an offseason coming off of a 21-win season, uh, lose a few players, and then the whole Pat Chambers nightmare comes along. Right. Jim Ferrian as the interim head coach. Chambers is out the door. And, you know, can they avoid last place with, 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 the, with the stuff that's going on off court now? I don't – and this was a team that I kind of would have been a little big on because, you know, I thought that they had enough coming back and, and they surprised us – they surprised me last year with the way they played. Um, probably an NCAA tournament team a year ago with some really big scalps along the way. When you look at what they did on, on the road, I mean, you know, and just what happened, can they rebound from this – at all do they have any like magic in there i i'm thinking not and what a shame yeah uh, i mean sam sesums averaged 19.4 points per game last year for binghamton uh yeah. and that might be their best player uh, and i love the america east but i don't think 19.4 in the america east equals 19.4 in the well that was most of binghamton scoring <laughs> if you if you follow it on the radar binghamton not often good even by Big East or America East standards. I'm sorry. Uh, Titel, how, how about Northwestern? Chris Collins' team, uh, anything to even pay attention to there? No, but it's going to be a cold, cold winter in Chicago, I fear. But uh, no, I mean, I like Collins, but uh, I think oh, it's a young team. And I think that there's not a lot of talent on the roster, especially in comparison to the top of this conference. So I think that they're going to get uh, – stepped on and beat up on by the rest of the conference. Hey, Titel, they're returning five of their top six scores from last year. That's the problem. They're uh, returning and players. that would be his thing. He was my punchline, and that's the problem. Boo <laughs> uh, like Booey yeah. only because his name is Boo Booey. Boo Booey. Can't, you, you can't go wrong with a guy named Boo Booey. Uh, David, we got, one, we got one team left. Uh, if you ask us the Big Ten, Big Ten, we are done. But, you know, somehow Nebraska is still part of this conference. Well, uh, I, I, and, and Fred Hoiberg, though, is, you know, while I think we got a last place team or second to last place team here, uh, he's starting to get more of his type of player in. And maybe he is going to build something here. In a, another well, year. I, I think what you're seeing here is the uh, consequences. <laughs> <laughs> of getting rid of Tim Miles. And when you look at how the rest of the league is succeeding with all of those top 25 teams uh, and how Nebraska isn't, it's just obvious that it's because Tim Miles built the league up and then Nebraska got rid of him. Uh, yeah. Uh, Titel, how about Nebraska the next couple of years? It, it, do you think Hoiberg has it going in the right direction at least? I'm a believer in Fred Hoiberg. He's been to four NCAA tournaments. I mean, the guy knows how to coach. Okay. Um, it's weird yeah, only does. because, like, when you think of him, like, there's only one school you'll ever associate him with because he was the mayor in Iowa State. Um, I can't think of too many players, frankly, who are more okay, associated. Okay, tell that story. With a lot. Of, yeah, a lot of people watching that aren't as old as we are might not know that. But he was, as the player, he was the mayor. There was a hilarious story to where the actual elected mayor was sick and it was on the radio and the mayor freaked out because he thought Fred Hoiberg was sick. <laughs> <laughs> the X factor also it, for him is that I believe that uh, one of his players, Trey McGowan, who transferred from Pitt, has a younger brother, Bryce, who's a D1 prospect. So if Fred can use Trey to get Bryce, then maybe it'll be a net game. Yeah, okay. And I have no clue why Trey McGowan's left Pitt. I mean, there must be some questions about Cable because why in the world do you make that transition? I don't know. <laughs> uh, but he'll be he'll be helpful to stop Nebraska's losing streak of yes, seventeen straight. That's what the losing streak they're sitting on right now. Seven yeah, and uh, if you didn't the the. <laughs> Most recent addition to that was the most spectacular in the midst of COVID, the worst visual optics you'll ever see Fred yeah. Hoiberg on the bench. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When, when he left the game sick, not yeah. with COVID, thankfully, but but during yeah. the Big Ten tournament, what portion was paid, played. But that's all, that's all the teams. What I want to do is ask each of you three questions, basically, at this point. Number one, who is going to win this conference? 
Number two, how many bids does this conference get? And number three, do you have any other final thoughts about the league? And uh, Joby, let me start with you on that. Uh, I'm going to stick with Wisconsin. I think oh. this is one of those years that Greg Gard puts it together. So many good teams. It's going to take a team that can grind it out. They're not, you know, Wisconsin's not going to win this league with only three or four losses, but they're going to be the team with only six, you know, sort of thing. Uh, this team, this league, I'm going to go eight. It could go. I think the quality is even higher than eight, but I worry that, Teams have to lose when two teams play, uh, and they won't be able to rack up the gaudy records, uh, but eight uh, with quality well above that. And, uh, you know, it's going to be, as I kind of hand at, the scoring title is going to be very interesting in this one because, you know, I don't know if Garza is going to have the same scoring level he did last year because I think he's going to get more support. So it'll be interesting if, if someone like Olivers comes up because he is the only option at a team that still will push the ball up and down the court in, in Ann Arbor. Tatel, what do you think? Um, I think I will set the over under at eight. Um, I will take the over, but it's going to be very close and could end up being less depending on how things shake out. But I think this is an eight or nine bid league. As far as who wins it, um, I think it's a huge toss up. Um, as of today, it's Iowa, but they had injury problems last year and they almost lost Garza. Then again, Garza did not come back to finish second. So I'll pick Iowa and my guy, Fran McCaffrey. As far as players to watch or fun facts, I'm going to go with Travion Williams of Purdue. He's enormous, 6'9, 265. This is a kid last year as a sophomore. He had 36 and 20 at Michigan last January. If that's just scratching the surface, I don't know if his body improved over the summer, if he got in conditioning, but he's strong enough and big enough to dominate this conference. I'm personally going to put the conference at eight bids as well. I think that's the magic number. I, I just think nine may be too hard in a season like this one without the ability to build up wins in non-conference. Uh, and of course I'm going with Rutgers. I mean, I mean, I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with Iowa to win this conference. Uh, David, your thoughts to end the show. Uh, I'm going to go with seven. I, I, and again, I just, I, wow. I think that there's probably more tournament caliber teams, but again, will there be enough separation between them and everybody else with the lack of out of conference games? I'm going with whiskey to win it, but I will say this. And, and I'm, I, I hate saying this. I think a team that's going to be even better than expected, even though they're expected to be pretty good is, I don't want to say it because I don't want to make Chad happy. Do it. I'm not going to. Do it. We're not in the show till you do it. Rutgers. Rutgers is there good. It is. <laughs> Rutgers is good. Uh, and, that's and why I picked the up thing. to win it. They struggled on the road last year. That is indicative of teams that aren't that don't have a lot of experience. They have experience this year. And th while they struggled to get wins, they went into a lot of arenas that were hard to win in and were in game after game after game right down to the very end. I, I think they really break through that ceiling this year and have a big, big year. And the first of many big years, and it was culminating in a few years in the national championship. We all know, we all know how it works. Uh, but right. at that point, at this point, though, I want, do want to thank everyone for joining us. Uh, like I said, if you scroll up to the top of the page there, you can see our season preview tab. You can check out all our other previews, including the Pac-12 that we're going to be recording in a few minutes here later on tonight. Uh, or a few minutes here tonight, maybe I should say. But I'm Chad Sherwood. I have David Griggs, Joby Fortson, and John Titel. Thanks for joining us, and we'll talk to you again real soon.